Hi everyone, I'm Sue. Welcome to Blue Heron Hill. It is October 1st. We have not had a frost. We have not even had temperatures close to a frost yet. So I'm very, very pleased. But what I'm going to do is take you on a little bit of tour. We are still harvesting from the garden. As you can see, my little corn teepee here with, uh, with the pumpkins at the bottom. That I consider a harvest harvest the corn stalks and um, use them as decoration. People pay at nurseries and roadside stands for those things. <laughs> so I saved on that. So let me show you already what I've harvested today. Here I have a basket of tomatoes and some peppers my tomatoes are still producing now they were slow to start and they are just more or less dribbling in i can't say that i've had um, a totally productive crop the plants look great but i never did a weight so perhaps next year i'm going to do a weight count on all of my tomatoes that i pick but i'm still getting tomatoes and of course, I will, when there's a first sign of frost or very low 40s temperatures, I will go out and pick all of my green tomatoes and then have them ripen in the house. But let me go and show you what else I'm gonna harvest today. I have this beautiful bed. We have leeks here. I'm harvesting those today. Marigolds here and here. I have some kale in the back and then this is a Mexican sunflower. Now this bed I have earmarked for something new. So I'm going to have to harvest my leeks. I am going to leave the flowers there and I will probably harvest all of that kale because what's going to go in here is asparagus. I need to relocate my asparagus bed. So as you can see, the bed itself is rather low in soil. So I am going to, I have a couple wheelbarrows left of compost and I am just going to pour that all in here. Flowers are going to stay, they'll die back when the, the frost hits, but I still have plenty of room to plant my asparagus. This whole bed I'm gonna set aside for the asparagus. I have to, I'll show you a picture of my current asparagus. My asparagus bed is located at the base of the swing set by the white pickets. The swing set's old, decrepit, has to go because we're making way for a new solar array. So in the mode of harvesting, I have some random carrots that still haven't been harvested. I have a bed here and then I have a bed over there. Uh, with, uh, I don't know, a couple dozen carrots that are still in the ground that are going to be harvested. And here I have my bean arbor, which I have just let go to seed. And I am going to, there's a, there's a tomato plant here in the front, which still has green tomatoes. But I'm going to try and pull down some of this, this vining of the beans. Although I find that it, it helps when it totally dies off and everything dries, they break off this trellis much easier. So I do still have, of course, tomato plants. And then I have my sweet potatoes. If you saw my video, my last video out on harvesting, I had a couple bins of sweet potatoes that were gonna get harvested. These two bins will be my next project to see what they have in them. The leaves are looking rather ratty and I think that it's probably about time that I harvested them. These three other bins of sweet potatoes, I'm gonna leave until a frost takes the leaves and see how that affects the, the sweet potato harvest. Across in the main garden, through the gate. This is another harvest that I will be doing in a day or two. 
these are Trail of Tears beans. Some of these are not fully dry yet, but I'm gonna come through and pick all the dried ones out. And the others will come along. And I'm gonna be using these as black beans throughout the winter. This row of peppers, they just have a few peppers left on it, and I am going to be pulling this row. The peppers look spectacular now. There's tons of flowers, but there's nothing that's going to be able to produce a nice, fully ripened pepper by the time the frost comes. And then, of course, I have a harvest that I've been picking of tomatoes in this row. Uh, Juliet's on this side, then I have some Jet Stars, some mm, Hungarian Heart, I think that is right there, and some, I think these are Sun Gold Tomatoes, and then some more Paste Tomatoes. Now I've already harvested some leeks already, um, and usually I leave some in the ground to harvest again in the spring. I mulch them highly, uh, really deep, and they do well and start again in the spring. And it gives me still fresh leeks in the springtime months before I can get my new leeks in. I find that I just can't pull them out. Uh, I do hill them up, I, I plant them in a trench, and then I, I uh, throughout the season, I will hill them up so they are buried quite deep in this bed. I dug out my kale. I know a lot of you are saying, oh, don't do that. It will last all winter long. Well, yes, it will. <laughs> but as I'm preparing this bed for another crop, the asparagus, I want them with ample room to spread out. Now, a lot of the kale, the outer leaves have been munched and chewed are not very edible. So taking those off, but all of the rest of these, I'm taking them in and I'll probably dry them and make them into powder uh, to put secretly into soups and sauces and stews and things like that. Where the family doesn't know that they have kale in there. Here's a few of the, the leeks, pretty good size on a number of these, um, I think washed up, sliced up, they'll give me a nice amount. Here's a small carrot bed. <laughs> um, I did harvest the majority of the carrots earlier in the summer, but these I left hanging on because they weren't quite uh, large enough. There you go, I think that is a lovely crop of carrots. Plus, I found a few onions too. We've got four of them. So, bonus. Now here is my brassica bed, and there is one delightful surprise in here. Look at that. Look at that head of broccoli. This is ready. It's still it's still tight, but the little individual flowers, and that's what they are, are not yet starting to sprout. So I have a few, I think I may have four in here. There's one, two, another pretty one, three, another big one, four. I do have a few small sprouts. I don't know why 
these didn't head up like they like their other cousins next to them but i'm going to pick pick those also and i'm going to let these plants continue to grow so i i am positive i am going to get some side shoots so an additional harvest in the coming month so let me get to picking these and i'll show you what they look like when they come out Now you can, I don't know if you can see this already, but we already have some side shoots coming off. I nicked that one, so that's going in the house. Doesn't that look lovely? A bonus crop of broccoli, my second of the year. It's well worth it to try and grow a fall crop of brassicas. Let's see what else might be in my brassica garden. I decided to pick one of my Chinese cabbages. A couple of these outer leaves. A little nibbled on, but not too bad. The head on the inside. head on the inside looks absolutely fabulous. Oh, and super tight. Very, very good. It looks like my cabbage is starting to head up, but I've just felt underneath here and it's not tight yet. All of them are about at the same level. And I even have some cauliflower over there, which I'm just starting to see the flowerets coming out. There we go, October harvest. I'm still pulling things out of the garden. We haven't had our first frost yet. That's supposed to be coming. The long range temperatures are not forecasted for into the 30s. But when they do come, hopefully I'll be ready and, and salvage everything possible that could come out of my garden. Uh, of course, I'm right on my backdrop of my corn teepee with a few of the pumpkins. I will put a picture of the entire crop. Um, insert that in here so you can see that. Say what we plant, we, we picked today. We've got these Trail of Tear, Tears beans. They're dried beans. Uh, they're black beans. I will take these inside and uh, lay them out in a dry but warm place so they continue to dry and their shells will then become really br brittle and be able to pop those black beans right out of those shells. Also, we picked a oh, glorious head, heads of broccoli, one Chinese cabbage, um, and down here we have carrots, a nice showing for some carrots that I left in the ground after my first crop was harvested. I have oh, a few little onions that escaped the first harvest. Over here we have kale and then we have some leeks. Then I have a basket of tomatoes and peppers. Uh, most of the tomatoes here have their first blush at this time of year, I like to pick them when they are just starting to turn. It tends to be rainy this time of year, and then they will a sudden uptake of water will uh, cause them to crack and split, and I don't want that to happen. I want to get these um, in a nice, pristine condition, and they will ripen very nicely in the house. And I have some cherries and grape tomatoes down there, a few peppers left over, not many more. Those plants I'll probably be I'll probably be pulling up those peppers in the next couple days when I start to put some of these beds to bed for the winter. So our October harvest is still not over. 
we can still garden into October, at least in my zone of 6A. I know some of you are so lucky you get to go longer. And some of you have already had Jack Frost nipping at your garden and nothing else is able to continue growing. So thanks for joining me on this video. Um, what zone are you in? Are you still picking? Oh, has that frost nipped on the, on the leaves of your plants yet? I hope not. I hope you can squeeze in a few more warm days so your plants can just push through a few more um, of their beautiful fruits. So until the next time that we can go digging in the dirt, happy gardening. Bye.